Hello everyone. Today we are going to conduct experiment number seven. In this experiment, we will uh, uh, learn about physical and chemical properties. Uh, we will observe uh, physical properties of various elements of periodic table. And then we will also learn uh, what are physical changes and what are chemical changes. And we will distinguish them. Uh, so let's begin this experiment. The procedure of this experiment is given in this PDF file and uh, uh, some data uh, which will be needed uh, later to complete the uh, report is given in these three sections, section A through H. As you can see, this experiment has uh, eight sections starting from A all the way through H. Okay, so let's take a look at the experimental procedure. So if you click on this and uh, it will open a PDF file. So let's open the PDF file. All right. So let's first define what are physical properties and what are chemical properties because that's what we are going to identify in the beginning. Now physical properties are those properties which can be observed without uh, changing the chemical identity of uh, uh, the material. For example, uh, smell of any material. You don't have to change the formula of the material to observe the smell or color, right? So color or smell or uh, mass. Uh, so all these properties are physical properties. Because in order to measure any of these properties, we don't have to change the chemical identity. So if, for example, if you measure the mass of water, uh, the water molecule will stay water molecule. It's not going to break down. So therefore, mass is a physical property. Similarly, if you want to measure the boiling point, uh, so in boiling point, we take liquid water. So its formula is H2O. We put it in a beaker or a container. We heat it up and after heating it will become steam or vapors but it will still stay water so steam has formula of still h2o so we did not change the identity so therefore boiling point is also a physical property so some of the common physical properties are given here so color melting point boiling point hardness texture solubility electrical property density all these are physical properties now on the other hand chemical properties are those properties which uh, when we measure them uh, the identity of uh, the material changes so for example uh, flammability or amount of heat uh, produced when you burn anything so that's uh, called the calorie uh, content so for example, if you have a gasoline molecule, right? So if we have a gasoline molecule and I want to measure the flammability. Um, so when you measure flammability, uh, gasoline will burn away, uh, right? So uh, there's no more gasoline left. So it will change into carbon dioxide and uh, water vapor. So it's not gasoline anymore. So the formula or the identity of gasoline has altered or changed. So therefore, flammability is a chemical property. All right. So that uh, there are many other chemical properties so such as uh, flammability, rusting, explosiveness, all those are chemical properties. So when we measure these properties, a change uh, may take place. Uh, for example, if we measure the boiling point of any object, uh, things may go from liquid right, to a vapor. So that's a change. So in a change, if the chemical structure or formula does not alter, for example, if we start with liquid water, we boil it and now we have a gas water, which is vapor, but the formula did not change. So that change is called physical change. Okay, so a physical change is a change in which the chemical structure or the chemical formula does not change. On the other hand, a chemical change is a change in which the 
a new compound will form or, or the formula of the compound will change. For example, let me, okay. So for example, uh, you take, uh, uh, let's say, uh, vinegar, right? So vinegar, formula of vinegar is this one. And you add baking powder to it or baking soda to it. So this is baking soda. And we know that when we mix vinegar and baking soda, we see bubbles. That bubbles is actually carbon dioxide gas. And plus there will be some other, uh, you know, new molecule also. But this change is a chemical change. Why? Because uh, the chemical formulas have changed, uh, have uh, changed. So the vinegar and baking powder no longer exist. So any process in which a new compound forms, that will be a chemical change. For example, if uh, you uh, add, uh, you know, uh, let's say you take a metal such as sodium and you add acid to it, so we will f see sodium chloride plus hydrogen gas. So this will bubble, right? So this will be a uh, example of uh, a chemical change because a new compound has formed and the chemical formulas have changed. Okay. So that's the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. So chemical changes are also known as chemical reactions. Uh, we learned in the theory portion how to write a chemical reaction, how to write a chemical equation, how to balance it. Now, <clears throat> in a chemical reaction, a new compound will always form. For example, in this case, we started with sodium metal and added HCl acid to it. Now we have sodium chloride and the hydrogen gas. So that's an example of a chemical reaction. So in a chemical reaction, new compound will form. But if we actually conduct the reaction, we cannot see these molecules, right? So we won't know if a new molecule is formed or not. So therefore, we rely on some evidences of a chemical reaction. So what are the evidences of chemical reaction? So most common evidences of a chemical reaction are a formation of a precipitate. Now precipitate is a solid product when two liquid solutions are mixed and suddenly we saw a solid in the mixture that is a precipitate. So formation of a precipitate is an indication that a new compound has formed. So that will indicate a chemical change has taken place. So whenever a precipitate is formed, the solution will become cloudy. Uh, now precipitate may be white color, may be some other color, uh, that's not important as long as you see that two clear liquids are mixed and now suddenly there is a cloudiness or there is a powder, that means a chemical reaction has taken place and that solid powder is known as precipitate. The other example of a chemical change evidence is uh, a formation of gas bubbles. So whenever a gas is formed, for example, in this reaction, uh, if you look at it, one of the product is a gas. So this gas will show up as a bubbles. So, uh, so formation of bubbles is also an indication of a uh, chemical process. Uh, so this process of formation of bubbles is known as effervescence. The occurrence of color change is also indication of a chemical change. So for example, if you mix a blue uh, liquid or blue chemical solution with a colorless solution, right? Uh, and suddenly you mix these two solutions and now we have a pink color solution. So there is no reason unless something new is formed uh, there's no other reason why would blue uh, would change to pink, right? So that color, this is known as color change. So <clears throat> color change is also an indication of a chemical process. And finally, uh, whenever we mix two compounds and suddenly uh, we see heat produced, uh, that is also indication of a chemical change or a chemical reaction. 
uh, or uh, uh, change in odd order so this is not very common and uh, so therefore it's not easy to detect uh, but other indications are quite common in a chemical reaction so now in this experiment <clears throat> we will uh, take a look at various cases in which we will see all these uh, evidences of a chemical reaction so starting with uh, uh, section A. So in section A, we are going to see eight different elements, right? So let's go to section A. So if we go back to our lab and you will see the section A. So these are sample images. So if you click on it, so you will see uh, eight different elements. So first element is the name of element is given. It's nickel here uh, and uh, This cube is a pure nickel form and that's a kind of a you know nickel uh, Crude nickel you may say uh, note down the color note down the you know physical state it's a solid and so on then we have tin note down the color you know so bismuth is here magnesium iron cadmium copper aluminum okay so <clears throat> so that's the data for sample uh, part a remember we will need this data to complete the lab report we'll go over the lab report in a minute so let's uh, continue forward all right so that's in section a so we only going to observe all those elements and note down the color. We're going to note down whether it's a metal or a non-metal or a metalloid. And we also going to note down the state of matter, whether it's a solid, liquid or a gas. From part B all the way up to part H, there are different chemical or physical processes. Okay. <clears throat> Now, chemical processes are those processes in which we mix two chemicals and a chemical reaction takes place and a new compound will form. You need to identify whether the process is a chemical or a physical. Okay, so I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Remember, the definition of a chemical process is if a new substance forms with a new chemical formula, that's a chemical change. If no new substance forms, then it's a physical change. Okay. So part B all the way up to part H, it may be chemical, may be physical. So all you need to do is go uh, to these sections and watch the videos. So click on this one. So now for example, that's a video for part B and C. So click on this. Right? And, and it will be an image of uh, or video of uh, a chemical process. Uh, I'll let you guys watch it. Uh, okay, so let's just skip ahead. So first video is, so we started with, okay, so there is a some tiny amount of uh, iodine crystals here, and then we're going to heat those crystals. Uh, so you will see once the crystals are heated, something will happen. So let's see what happens. Do you see a some kind of a pink gas forming right so that's what you need to observe and once you make the observation note down the point and go to the lab report I think we should take a look at the lab report and we'll see what to do okay so lab report of this uh, experiment is given here so let's go to report as uh, i said that it has eight sections so starting from section number a so all the data for this lab report is given in those uh, videos of the three sections we discussed so first uh, for section a this is the data and that's the lab report so uh, we have eight different elements 
and first we're gonna choose each and every element and we're gonna just observe so for example first element is nickel we're gonna choose nickel then what's the symbol for nickel it's an i atomic number so you go and take a look at in the periodic table and find out what's the atomic number so write that write down that value so maybe i'm just gonna say xx for now now next is you need to uh, choose what color is it so go to the uh, sample and see uh, to me it looks like a silvery grayish color so uh, go here so i'll uh, choose shiny silver right so what type it is i know for a fact nickel is a metal and state i know nickel is a solid because i can see it's a solid so similarly for rest of the elements you need to choose the correct information and complete section number a so that's section number a now based on your observation what are the general physical properties of metal non-metal and uh, metalloid so write down whatever you observe for example i can give you one hint all metals uh, if you observe carefully they are shiny so that's one uh, general property of metal similarly find out about non-metals and metalloids and write whatever your observe uh, your observation is so uh, i can write metals are shiny right so so that finishes uh, section number a now for section number b so this is record your observation observation for sublimation of iodine so here that's the video which we saw so before heating it was uh, uh so you write whatever your observation was so i can give you a hint so before heating iodine was a uh, crystalline solid right and during heating uh, you know uh, during heating uh, we observe uh, formation of uh, vapors and then after heating uh, a you know purple gas was formed so those are all observations so use your own language use uh, uh, your own observation whatever you observe so uh, that's how what we're gonna do we're gonna just observe uh, record our observations and similarly at the end of the video you will watch what happens at the bottom of the watch glass and then you note it down here so that will be the experiment sublimation of iodine crystal uh, then part C is mixing aluminum with copper to chloride so go back there and let's see part C so part C is somewhere here so that's aluminum and they are mixing it with uh, uh, sorry they are mixing it with copper to chloride solution and you can see there's a bubble formation so not on that observation so watch the video so we're not gonna uh, do it so watch the video uh, so at initially whatever you saw initially it was a uh, aluminum foil and a blue copper to chloride solution time point upon adding crystals stirring crystals and so on so uh, so record your observation so after 10 minutes what happens uh, so all the observations will be made from the uh, video and then you choose whether it's a physical or a chemical property okay and similarly for part d through part h videos are provided here so d to h in all these videos we're gonna see mixing of two chemicals and something will happen either a color change will happen either or uh, uh, bubbles will form 
or heat will form note down all those observations and then record those observations here initial observation and then during heating so all those and then choose whether that process is a physical or a chemical process so that's what we're gonna do from part uh, C through H and finally you uh, need to write a conclusion uh, based on all the observations so you need to explain what is a chemical process and what is a physical process uh, so you need to explain as if you are explaining it to a middle school student uh, uh, and that student has no idea what is a physical what is a chemical process so you need to explain it in really really simple language so use your own words so write whatever you feel like uh, what is a physical what is a chemical processes or chemical changes and that's uh, that's all about the lab uh, uh, please ignore this section you don't need to drag or drop a file here we don't have anything here so just complete all the way up to conclusions and then we are done and once once you do that just hit submit and the experiment is over if you have any question please send me an email or see me during office hours